Hi everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you guys know, I love talking about cars in general, especially about the buying process, because it's one of the most stressful things you have to go through. And then for many of us, sometimes we just don't know which cars to buy. And some of the most popular videos I have been creating lately has all been to do with buying a new car. Whether you're buying something affordable, like a Toyota RAV4, or something much more expensive, like an Infiniti QX80, the process is the same. And I already talked about how to buy a car and also what kind of cars to avoid. So I've done those two videos, so go and take a look at that for your reference. But today, what I want to talk about is how to buy a car based on test drive. Because if you do the test driving properly, you can make decisions much faster and much more effectively, and you will likely be very happy with your decision and with your final purchase. So let me give you 10 things that you can take into account when you're test driving a new car so that you can make the right decision in terms of which car to buy. Let's go. Welcome back. So I'm gonna give you 10 things you should consider when you're trying to figure out which car to buy based on test driving a car. Because if you don't test drive a car, you might end up buying a car that you're not happy with. So make sure that you do a proper test drive because it's probably the most important thing you can do when trying to figure out which car to buy. So the first step you need to do is to make sure that you drive all the cars you're interested on the same day. So let's say you're interested in three or four different cars you're trying to buy. Maybe Toyota RAV4 versus Nissan Rogue versus Mazda CX-50 or Honda CRV. Then try to figure out a way to drive all of them back to back on the same day. Don't drive a RAV4 one day, then one week later drive a Nissan Rogue and then a week later drive something else because your body and your mind will not remember exactly what the differences are. But if you drive them back to back, hopefully on the same day within the hour or two, then you will know right away which car feels right and which car is the best one for you. So first step is to make sure that you try to find a way to drive all the cars on the same day within the same afternoon or same morning if possible. And that means you have to do some preparation work such as calling the dealer or the salesperson that you know very well and letting them know that uh, you're going to come at a certain time. So let's say you're coming on Saturday at 1 p.m. for RAV4, then you book the 2 p.m. for Nissan Rogue, then 3 p.m. for Mazda CX-50, so forth, so forth. So try to book that in advance. Otherwise, it'll be very difficult to try to arrange all the test drive on the same day in case they are very busy or maybe the cars are not available. So once again, drive all the cars that you're interested on the same day. The second advice is easy one, and that is to repeat step number one. Okay, that seems ridiculous, right? No, because you cannot possibly make the right decision if you only drive these cars one time. You gotta find a way to drive it two times. So uh, once you have arranged to drive three or four cars that I mentioned earlier, then pick another time, maybe a week later or sometime uh, a couple weeks later, and do the exact same thing again but pick a different environment so maybe you were driving in the morning then next time pick a afternoon or evening when it's a little bit different a different lighting condition or maybe you drove it when it's sunny then pick a day when it's cloudy or raining so they can try these cars under different circumstances and if you do it twice then that will really really help you to figure out which is the car that you will like What's my third point? Well, it's really important to find a way to test drive these cars for at least 30 minutes, maybe even 45 minutes, or ideally an hour. And then that's gonna be really hard because most dealers will not want to give you cars for that long. But if you try to explain to them that this is one of the uh, biggest expenses that you're going to have, that you're looking forward to having a longer term relationship with this dealership, and that it is really important for you and your family or your friends to make the right decision and that you need at least 30 minutes to drive, most dealers will be understanding and they will give you that time. Maybe asking for 45 minutes might be a bit of a challenge, but I still think it's very doable. Asking for one hour, I agree, would be tough. But if you're going back to the same dealership you dealt with before, then usually they will be okay with one hour. Now, some premium luxury brands such as Lexus will actually let you take the car out sometime overnight or maybe even two nights and that would be even better if you can drive it for that long but minimum 30 minutes a lot of people just drive these cars for 10 minutes or sometimes even less than that and i always say how could you possibly make decision based on such a short drive that would be like walking into a restaurant and only eating the appetizer and assuming that the restaurant will be good 
for all kinds of food that they might serve and that's obviously not the case so do drive the car for at least 30 minutes longer if possible and maybe even taking overnight if your salesperson or your manager will let you do that that would be the most ideal thing to do uh, and uh, you will have a lot better result in terms of your decision if you can drive it longer the fourth point is the fact that you want to be a passenger sometime and not a driver when test driving these cars so uh, have a friend family or spouse or someone else go with you for test driving so that they can drive as well and then you get to sit either in the passenger seat or even the rear seat as well and try to get a feel for the car as a passenger that is sometimes just as important because maybe the driver likes the vehicle but maybe your family member your friends your partners might not like it as passengers because maybe the car isn't comfortable or is rough riding for example on the street so always go to the test drive with another person so that uh, you can drive and they can drive as well and you can judge the car based on uh, driver's experience but also as a passenger side the fifth one is an easy one it's also an obvious one and that is to make sure that you drive the car under different road conditions not just the city road not just the highway roads but maybe try to find some gravel road and some twisty uh, corners as well so that you can drive the car under multiple circumstances because maybe the car feels okay on a regular road but it loses composure under rough conditions or maybe it feels fine on the highway but when you get to twisty mountain road it's not so agile and not fun to drive and maybe you won't like the vehicle so try to drive at different um, road conditions ideally if you're close to your home then drive it to your house and try to take a path that you will normally take going to grocery store or to work or somewhere else and sometimes that makes it easier to make a judgment because you're comfortable with that road and you're familiar with that road and then when you drive three or four different cars on that particular road that you're already familiar with you can tell right away which cars perform the best for you and which one is the one that you really like to buy so do drive under different circumstances even though that seems like a bit of a hassle believe me Sometimes a car that's really good under condition A does not perform very well under condition B and vice versa. So you got to try a couple of different ways to test out the car. I hope it's been helpful so far. What else can I tell you? Well, the sixth point is to also try to load up the car as much as possible. And this one is a little bit tricky because your dealership might not want to help you with that. But if you think you might use the car under full load circumstances, such as the fact that you might have many family members or you're taking people around to different places, then try to show up to the dealership with three or four people and put them in the car when you test drive so that you can figure out whether acceleration, performance, ride, and so forth are affected by heavier load. Sometimes cars feel just fine under light conditions, like yourself just driving it, but when you load up the car and going up the hill, you might realize, okay, this thing is gutless, it's not powerful enough, and I can't possibly make this work because I also have to tow something in the back from time to time. So again, I know this is a bit of a hassle, but you're asking me to give you some advice to make the best out of your decision-making process. Then you also have to do this extra step, which is to load up the car with additional passengers uh, and see if that will affect the driving character and the performance of, of the vehicle and you can then make some very wise decision as to which car to buy. Now, some of you guys might want to tow a vehicle, but I doubt very much that uh, dealers will let you tow anything, so that one you're gonna have to give up unless you decide to rent a car or something like that, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But again, try to drive the car under many different circumstances. The seventh thing you can do is to also try to drive different trim levels. So for example, if you're buying a Toyota Tacoma truck, you know, driving a TRD Pro with a 2.4 liter turbo hybrid will be very different than driving one without the hybrid system and the one without the off-road suspension. So you're going to try a couple of different versions if you're not quite sure which type of uh, model you want to buy within the same model range. So once again, if it's a Tacoma, you might want to drive a TRD off-road and TRD Pro and then maybe even compared to Limited, assuming these models are available because I often found that you might be unhappy with one trim but when you drive another one, you really like it. For example, I remember driving the Lexus GX550 recently, many different trim levels. And even though I really like the overtrail, actually the ride is very harsh and not all that comfortable. 
But if you buy the non-overtrail version of the GX550, it's actually super smooth and refined. And I can imagine that for some people, that would be a better purchase than the overtrail. So do try to drive a couple of different versions of the same model so you can figure out which one is the right one for you. Now, if you followed my first seven steps, most likely you'll end up with the right car anyway. But there are a few more things to consider. For example, if you really, really want to be 100% sure that the car you buy is the right one for you, then you're going to have to rent it. Because I don't think most dealers will let you take the car out for more than an hour or two at the most. Like I said, sometime overnight if it's a premium luxury brand. But if you think that's not enough, then you have to rent that car. And then that way you can drive it for three or four days or maybe even up to a week and then you know for sure if you like the car because sometimes when you drive the car for more than a few days you begin to develop a certain feel for the car either positive or negative or neutral and many of those things do not come up in your mindset until you have driven it for many days now if you can't find the car you want to buy in a rental shop then you may have to use something like a Turo T-U-R-O where you can have a peer-to-peer -peer type uh, rental and maybe they have the car that you're looking for. Just make sure that the car you're renting is the same year or similar model to the one that you're trying to buy because if you're trying to buy a 2024 RAV4 but you're renting a 2018 RAV4 from Turo, well, it's going to feel different, obviously. So make sure that the year is similar to what you're looking for. Uh, but once again, if you really want to be sure, you can rent the car for longer times. We're getting close to the end, but I got a couple more advices for you. And that is to try other features in the car that has nothing to do with the driving character. So for example, uh, you might want to turn on the radio, maybe try out the Bluetooth or even the Apple CarPlay. You might want to make sure that the heating works. Like for example, sometimes the, the heater for the steering is very weak in some cars and in some other cars it's nice and strong. So there are many things that you might want to try if those features are important to you. So if a radio and stereo quality is important to you, make sure that you try that out. You may have to ask the salesperson or your family member to step up for a second because you might want to crank out the music, for example. Also, for some people, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto are very important features and not all cars offer them. So you might end up liking the car, but it doesn't have Apple CarPlay and therefore it's not the right car for you. So make sure that the features that the car might have Everything from the stereo system to the infotainment system to things like a heater for the steering, for the seats, maybe ventilation for the seats as well, uh, to make sure that these things are what you're looking for and that they either meet or exceed your expectation. And that way you can make the right final decision. The tenth and the final advice I have for you is that if you still can't make decision after doing all these things, then let it set for a while. Just hold off for a while wait a couple of weeks maybe even a month or so and either repeat some of the process or at the very least maybe even consider a different type of car altogether sometimes people can't make a decision and what i found is that if they wait a little bit some other ideas pop up and that will lead them to a different direction so for example maybe you were convinced that you want to buy a sedan because you always like the styling of a sedan but after a couple of weeks, you decided, you know what, I actually do need the SUV after all. Or maybe you always wanted a truck, but after thinking about it for a while, you decided that truck doesn't work for you because most of the time, you don't need to carry any kind of cargo in the back. And sometimes the trucks are too big and they don't fit into your garage. So some of these kind of ideas and nuances will come up in your mind if you let it set for a few weeks. And then when you're maybe reading a magazine or looking at YouTube reviews, these ideas will pop up. So I always say don't rush into purchasing these things. It's an important buy. It's a lot of money and you don't want to make a mistake because it's hard to change car once you buy a new car. It's just going to cost you more money to switch over. So, so try all of the nine devices I have for you and at the end of the day if you can't decide just walk away from the decision for a while then revisit that decision and most likely you'll end up knowing exactly what to do. So I hope these advices were helpful to you uh, in addition to many of the other things I talked about in my other videos. So please do take a look at when it's called how to decide which car to buy. And I have another video that says how to decide which car not to buy. And this is the third of the series of videos I'm making about buying a car because it's such an important process for us and involves a lot of money. And people are often frustrated that they can't seem to make the right decision and sometime down the road they have to end up trading the car or changing it over to something else and that also costs more money and time so make sure that you take lots of time to test drive a car do it right 
and hopefully you end up with a car you love and that you'll be able to keep it for a very long time because then that will enhance your lifestyle and your livelihood. If you enjoyed my video, please uh, give me a thumbs up, make some comments, and if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.